The Chase. The Enterprise races against Klingons and Cardassians for the answer to a genetic mystery. The Enterprise is surveying protostar nebulae when Riker calls Picard to the observation lounge. The room is ominously dark for no real reason, and there's an artifact on the table, which Picard is fascinated by. It turns out that he's having a surprise meeting with his old archaeology professor Galen, and the artifact turns out to be something of Kerlin origin. I was kind of hoping for an attempted assassination or something. I mean, Picard is stupid enough to walk into a dark room on his own ship, knowing that it shouldn't be dark, but he doesn't seem to think very much of it. The artifact is extremely rare, and has almost never been found complete with all the little pieces. Galen tells Picard that the artifact is a gift, because putting an incredibly rare and valuable artifact on a ship that is perpetually on the verge of exploding sounded like a great idea. How about one that just gets rocked all over the place? I'm sure somebody's head is going to be going through that in the next episode. Galen says he's exploring uncharted territory and invites Picard to join him. And the music tells us there's something to be wary of, despite Picard acting like a schoolgirl a minute before. <laughs> Picard asks what Galen has been doing lately while he's been out of the spotlight, and he says he's been studying micropaleontology, but he can't say what he's discovered other than that it's very important. And I announce my findings. You'll be heard halfway across the galaxy. He says that if Picard wants to find out, he'll have to join him for up to a year. And Picard says he'll think about it. I said he declines because he has a job. <laughs> he talks to Beverly about it. Who is drinking tea out of a teapot that wouldn't actually hold that much tea due to its stupid design. <laughs> But at least it has a flat bottom, so she can set it down on the table. <laughs> he tells her that his relationship with Galen was like that of a father and son that truly understood each other, but Picard still ended up choosing Starfleet instead of archaeology. He goes to tell Galen that he can't leave the Enterprise, and Galen's pissed, and starts to berate him for refusing his offer years ago, and now doing it again, before storming out. Like a baby. I had that, but I didn't want to say it. After Galen transports to a Vulcan ship, he hails the Enterprise to tell them he's being attacked. And they immediately drop out of warp, and the ship is right in front of them, which seemed kind of unlikely. They attempt to disable the attacking Uridian ship, and Worf, in his typical manner, blows the whole thing up, but <laughs> slyly says, I don't know why that happened. <laughs> they manage to beam the injured Galen into sick bay, where he apologizes for being a blazing asshole to Picard, and then dies. And Beverly simply states she can't do anything before walking away. She's cloned people's spines and brought people back to life who are already dead, but apparently her skills fall short at a simple gunshot. I also liked how that monitor on the wall said real-time life signs. What other kind of life signs would they be? Later, Jordy tells Picard about the information they managed to recover from Galen's ship. It turns out that he was trying to stop the Iridians from stealing the information by turning it into blocks of numbers. And they can't figure out what pattern there is, if any. Data deduces the nearby planet Galen was at before, and Picard postpones their current mission to go check it out. And when they get there, they don't find much, but Picard surmises there must be a connection between this planet and the planet Galen was going to. On their way to that planet, Riker tells Picard that they're going to be late for some conference, but Picard says, if I'm not afraid of violating the Prime Directive, what makes you think I care about violating any other rules? Troy visits Picard in his writing room to see how he's coping with this situation and having hired a shitty doctor to serve on the ship. She tells him they should go to the conference, which is apparently some kind of delegate mediation thing, but Picard says this is more important. He doesn't give a shit about some dumb mediation crap. The Enterprise reaches the planet, but sees all life being destroyed in real time by an atmospheric change, and Worf says it cannot be stopped. Again, very slyly, because he enjoys just seeing life end. <laughs> Picard suggests that Galen's number blocks may have had something to do with organic matter, given that that's what's being destroyed. And then instead of trying to figure out what just happened on the planet, and maybe backing off after all the weird stuff they've encountered before, Picard decides to go look at the numbers. And for some reason, Beverly is there looking at them too. 
they figure out the number blocks are DNA fragments from 19 different planets. And Beverly says they're all compatible, despite being from different species on different planets. Picard says that shouldn't be possible, but they have crossbreeding going on between different alien races all the time, and they all seem to eat the same food and live in the same environments. Given what we know from this show, it shouldn't be that unusual, I would think. Jordy says the connecting of the DNA fragments is not a random natural formation, but rather an algorithm of intentional design. And Beverly says it's over 4 billion years old. And Jordy says they can't know what it was for until they run the program, which told me this episode probably wasn't going to make a lot of sense. They also note that someone else must know about these fragments, indicating that's why someone killed all life on the planet before. Picard suggests checking the DNA of the 17 non-Federation people on the ship, because all the organisms that had that gene were from outside the Federation. But when Beverly examines the crew's DNA, they don't find anything useful. Picard suspects that since Galen gave him the Curlin artifact, that's where he was before, so that's where they go. And they expect to find the Iridians there ahead of them, but instead run into the Cardassians. And then a Klingon vessel suddenly shows up, and the captains of the two vessels meet up on the Enterprise. Picard discerns that each group has partial fragments of the whole, and unless they combine them, they'll never know the secret contained therein. The Klingons assume it's a weapon, while the Cardassians assume it's a power source. Neither conclusion making any sense. I could see some kind of genetic weapon. Well, yeah, but I mean to be so sure about it, so adamant that that's what it is, is just stupid. Well, they have to be single-minded. Because this is Star Trek. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I did like how the Klingon and Cardassian captains kept trying to lie about why they were there at first. I thought it was funny. I like how the Klingon even is jokey about how them doing scientific research would be so stupid. <laughs> what were you doing here then? Scientific research. Yeah, they really know how to add depth to these different races. When they eventually put together all their information, the pattern is still incomplete. And I was hoping the last fragment would be held by the Ferengi, and they would have to get involved. <laughs> Picard, for some reason, tells Beverly to tell the computer to look for a pattern in the location of all the organisms, adjusting for four billion years of star shifting, which is a long time. So she says it'll take a long time. The abilities of the computer fluctuate wildly per episode. That is true. I mean, they had to shut the whole ship down to give stellar cartography all that power because it was extrapolating data of stars that wouldn't be formed for, what, two million years? In the meantime, the Klingon captain goes to 10 forward, where he challenges data to a Klingon test of strength. It was out of place, but I thought it was pretty funny. I agree. Wa, cha, way, mo, talk. He eventually tries to bribe Data into giving him the information first, which also doesn't work. Jordy finds an issue with the ship's security and calls Picard, but of course, we don't get to see what it is. The computer has identified the planet where the last fragment should be, and as soon as they know, the Cardassian captain beams out, and her ships start firing on the Warbird and the Enterprise before boosting away. The Enterprise pretends to be disabled, and afterward, the Klingon captain says it was fortunate that they found out their Cardassians were attempting to interfere with their systems. Even so, the Klingon ship will still be disabled for a while, and I really liked Picard's reaction to the Klingon captain's outburst. You incompetent Topa! You were supposed to be prepared! The Cardassian vessels have set a course for Ramazan. Picard tells the Klingon captain he can come with them to the real location of the final planet, as opposed to the fake location they gave the Cardassians. So Picard, Beverly, Worf, and the Klingon captain beam down to a world made out of fake rocks to collect samples of a lichen. And apparently their whole secret plan kind of sucked, because the Cardassians show up literally five seconds later. And then even Romulans step out of the shadows, revealing that they have been following the entire thing under cloak. Those damn Romulan spies. I wouldn't be surprised if the Cardassians, Klingons, and Picard, they're all Romulan spies, they just didn't know the other people were Romulan spies. I'm sure they'll reveal that in Picard Season 5. Then we'll get the Q origin story spinoff, and the title of the show will be Lowercase Q. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone starts arguing about what to do next and threatening to destroy the last DNA samples when Beverly scrapes some lichen off of a rock and passes it to Picard in the most conspicuous fashion possible. Picard scans it with his tricorder, and it starts reprogramming it immediately and activates the final program 
which seemed unsafe, especially if it had turned out to be a weapon. And it somehow causes the tricorder to project an image of an alien. The alien speaks to them, explaining that life appeared on its planet before any others in the area, and that they couldn't find any other beings like them on other planets. So they seeded life across the galaxy, which is the reason why every alien species looks like a human in a costume with makeup. She tells them that they would have had to work together to activate the message, and that those aliens desired to be remembered. And in activating the message, it showed that all of the beings were working together and living in harmony. It was the most Star Trek message I could have possibly imagined. <laughs> when the message is over, the Klingon captain has a pretty funny reaction. That's all? If she were not dead, I would kill her. And the Cardassian is offended at the idea of being related to the Klingons. And everybody just kind of shuffles away slowly in different directions. Afterward, the Enterprise hangs around for repairs. Picard and Beverly discuss the message and how it fell on deaf ears when Picard gets hailed by the Romulan captain, who hopes that one day they won't all hate each other's guts. And says maybe they're not so different after all. Because they all have this burning hatred of other species. <laughs> <laughs> the chase. Which is more of a race, not really a chase. Overall? This episode was based around a cool idea, and I liked that they addressed the fact that almost all intelligent alien races look the same in the show. I never expected that that would happen. But it made Picard look that much stupider for pointing out earlier that life forms from different worlds shouldn't be compatible with each other. I questioned why and how all these different groups became aware of Galen's discovery at the same time, and why they all agreed in believing it was so important when they didn't even know what it was. I liked that it turned out to be just a message, and that it didn't have its intended effect, at least on most of them. The Romulan captain contacting Picard afterward was pretty hokey though. I thought it would have worked better if it was the Cardassian, because they had already been working together leading up to that. It could have shown that she was becoming more sympathetic due to her personal exposure to humans. Instead, it was a Romulan that we've never seen before and who was barely in the episode. Some of the steps on the way were also kind of dumb, but overall I thought it was an enjoyable episode that thankfully didn't get bogged down by trying to be too fake scientific. I give it a B-. I gave this one a C. I agree with most of what you said. A question I had was where are the Eurydians in all of this? Were they also seeking out this knowledge? Did they know about it? And why was their ship destroyed when Worf said that shouldn't have happened? And nobody really seemed torn up about it. We've seen Picard go into full-on mope mode when one person dies. From that ship exploding, it seemed like a lot of people died. It was cool, and we finally accept that these races exist in the same universe together. The Enterprise typically only encounters one at a time, even though the conflicts would involve others, but it was a shame how shoehorned in the Romulans felt. And I agree, giving them that little moment of hope with Picard at the end seemed like a hokey and odd choice. I also agree that the Cardassian would have made more sense. And scientifically, this seems like a big deal, but in the end, everyone just shuffled away. No follow-up, no discussions. This one felt like the message the writers wanted to convey was huge, but it didn't feel huge. It felt like a shrug. And even though it was really out of place in this episode, I liked the Klingon arm wrestling. Those writers, those miserable topas. <laughs> I think that's what he said, right? Still working on my Klingon insults. Seems like they have more words for insults than anything else. Whereas we, in our very limited capacity, only have... <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for watching.